What's up, Michigan? State Champs is back with another week of blistering high school sports action. I'm Lauren Plant. This very studio is part of the incredible place that is Lawrence Technological University. Athletics here at the school growing and growing. New sports like competitive cheer and dance, women's hockey, track and field. They're also looking to grow their marching band. Over two dozen varsity NAIA level sports, academic and athletic scholarships available. Recruit yourself at LTUAthletics.com. I'm Jenna Rose, and State Champs is also brought to you by the Michigan Army National Guard, the Detroit Athletic Club Foundation's Male and Female Athlete of the Year Awards, the Detroit Medical Center's Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine Team, and our hockey coverage brought to you by Alta Equipment and Warrior. We thank all of them. We've got a brand new DMC Game Changers segment and our final Black History Month salute. Another MHSAA Minute, too. Time's a wasting. Let's get to the highlights. I'm Ryan Slocum in Flint, where Carmen Ainsworth put its 5-0 record on the line at home against one of Division III's top teams, 6-1 Beecher. The Bucks are led by a terrific guard once again. This year, it's Keon Menafield who goes behind the back and gets the teardrop to fall. Still in the first, Makai Ellison hits the pocket. He can't get it to go, but Isaiah 50 is there. Who will contend with me? Zay Jones throws it down. CA led it 13-8 after one, and they begin to take over in the second. Rashid Brown with the catch and shoot three. Then it's Jason Green out of the other corner for another triple. Brandon Yellow did not score, but Carmen Ainsworth led it 31-20 at the break, and they continue to pour it on in the third. The servant, Isaiah 50, Therefore, I have set my face like a flint. Another putback makes it a 15-point game. My thoughts exactly. Ellison then gets in on the act with the reverse. He and Jones each scored 14. CA up 43-31 after three. But Mike Williams must have said something good underneath that mask because the Bucks come to life in the fourth. The junior, James Cummings, with the huge board and put back. Moop's bucket cuts the lead to six. Then it's Carmelo Harris showing off the handle and the no-look feed to Micah Brown. And we are tied at 47 with a buck 15 to play. They were still tied with 1.7 seconds on the clock. Menefield had two chances to put Beecher ahead from the free throw line, but the senior misses them both. He can't believe it, and they go to overtime tied at 47. They would play into a second OT, tied at 63, five seconds to go. Harris to put Beecher ahead, it's no good, but Menefield comes up with the steal. The layup is blocked. But that's a goaltend, so the bucket is good. Beecher up two with 1.5 seconds to go. Menafield scored 27. So CA has to go the length of the court, and they draw up a doozy. It's Ellison for the win. No. Bucktown wins a thriller, handing Carmen Ainsworth its first loss of the season, 65-63 in double OT. Man, I missed them free throws, man. I was just like, Coach Mike always tells us you gotta focus. When we had practice, you gotta, you know, no talking with your free throws. But we, the past couple days, we've been playing around, you know, not being, he told us we gotta come prepared, but we been playing around. So I see what he was talking about. We know that they wanna beat us as bad as we wanna beat them. And, and like I told them, I said, it's starting to get warm out. You know, the girls is gonna be outside and people gonna be going to the mall. I said, you don't wanna get talked about all year long. For them to come back the way that they did, they showed the resilience of a team that has the potential to contend for a state title. I don't think we're there yet. I'm Mike Erlitis. We head to boys basketball action in North Farmington as the Raiders host the Eagles from Ferndale. The visiting Eagles starting out hot. Trayvon Lewis hits it for three as Ferndale jumps out to a 19-14 lead after one. 
More of the same from Ferndale and Lewis in the second. Again with the three ball from the corner, but North Farmington Stingy D stepping up. Dion Hayes with the steal and the bucket. He finished with 14 on the night. As we head to the half, we are all tied up at 28 apiece. In the third, Ferndale would regain the lead and get back on track. As Caleb Renfro sinks it from deep, Eagles up 45-40 after three. North Farmington not letting this one get away from them. Check out Justin Ross driving to the basket for the hoop and the harm. The Eagles would rebuttal in the form of Jason Drake. He gets it to go off the fast break. Two of his 19 as Ferndale holds their lead at five points. Last chance for the Raiders, down five with 10 seconds left. They go for the quick lay-in, but Jack Kennedy comes up huge with the big block to end this one as Ferndale holds on, beating North Farmington 60-55, giving them first place status in the OAA Red Standings. I'm Greg Molson in Goodrich for a wrestling quad, starting with the host team Goodrich taking on Lake Fenton. The visiting Blue Devils getting their first win from Zach Hall at 125 with a 7-2 win over Ryan Angelo. Moving to 135, check out Nolan Weber with the great move, getting the reversal for the deciding two points in a 4-2 win over Drew Corcoran. The Martians then start piling up the points with some pins. First, it's Brady Benson at 152. That's followed by another quick pin from Chance Carlson at 160 as Goodrich opens the night with a 42-28 win over Lake Fenton. The Blue Devils would bounce back in their next match, beating Flint Kersley 57-12. Drew Corcoran getting him started with the pin at 130. In the best match of the night, it was Freeland coming off a 70-9 win over Kersley, taking on Goodrich, picking it up at 135. That's Carson Richards finishing off Tyler Tomasek for the pin. Nolan Van Lu answers with six points for the Falcons, getting the pin of Chance Carson at 160. But it's William Gerard getting those points right back for the Martians, pinning Elijah Murphy at 171. Goodrich remains unbeaten on the season, beating Freeland 38-28 and adding another win over Kersley, improving to 9-0 the season. Time now to take a look inside Lawrence Technological University Athletics. LTU is starting up a women's hockey program in the fall of 2021. We caught up with the new head coach about building a team from scratch and expectations once the puck drops. First order of business is uh, trying to get the staff together, hopefully hire an assistant coach here pretty soon to help me with some recruiting stuff. And then the next order of business is get out on the road and get in front of kids, uh, let them know that LTU has a women's hockey team and we're open for business. So there is high school hockey in Michigan for, for girls. It's not as prevalent as on the guys' side, but definitely looking at the high school hockey in the state of Michigan, as well as a strong AAA and AA club uh, seen in the state of Michigan, as well as branching into the northern parts of Illinois, uh, the western parts of Ohio, the northern parts of Indiana. I look for good, hardworking, honest student athletes with drive to be good students in the classroom, good members of the community, and, and hopefully good hockey players to help us bring success on and off the ice. Take your future into your hands. Visit ltuathletics.com and recruit yourself. Lawrence Tech, where Blue Devils dare. Welcome into State Champs. I'm Jason Ross, Jr. Throughout the month of February, we're highlighting individuals who have made a significant impact on the colored youth of their respective communities in Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, and nationally today happens to be one of our Michigan guests, Wendy Hilliard, who was the first ever African-American Olympic gymnast to compete for the U.S. national team in international competition and the founder of the Wendy Hilliard Gymnastics Foundation. Wendy, how's it going today? Thank you for having me. Uh, Wendy, I'd like to start off by touching on something that I mentioned in the open there. You were the first African-American rhythmic gymnast to compete internationally for the U.S. national team. When you first heard that, to take you back a bit, when you first heard that title, what did that mean to you? 
Well, you know, first you have to make the national team. And just like all athletes, you're very excited after all of your hard work to be selected. So that's the first thing that happens. I think when I found out I was the first black, which, you know, you're not thinking about that while you're doing it. You're just trying to do what you have to do, which for me, which is making the national team. But, you know, I was very honored. Uh, I think it was a big milestone because there's so few blacks in gymnastics at that time. So it, you know, I was, I was honored. And Wendy, to touch on your foundation, the Wendy Hillier Gymnastics Foundation, if you could further delve into the mission that was in your mind when you founded the organization back in 1996. Well, the mission's really always been the same. It's basically for us to empower the lives of young people, both you know physically and through emotional health, uh, using the sport of gymnastics. Because by the time I decided to start my foundation, I had already been, you know, an athlete and then a coach and a coach an Olympian. But I really missed the grassroots. And when I developed it, it was really thinking about my grassroots in Detroit that I did my gymnastics from the recreation center. And I saw what kind of impact that had on my life, so I assumed it could have the same impact on others. So the mission's been the same. It's just really to provide free and low-cost gymnastics to youth that want to take the sport. And Wendy, that's Dauphin, New York. In 2016, you expanded to Detroit, which is where you're from. What was the, I guess, motivation to expand from New York to Detroit? It was a few things. So uh, they have a program in Detroit called Detroit Homecoming, where for the last really five or six years, they've been inviting, they call us expats, people that grew up in Detroit or Michigan and went other places to be successful. And they wanted to bring that talent back to the city. So I was attending these events once a year and I noticed that people were doing a lot of different projects, but they weren't really affecting the youth, I thought. You know, it was definitely helping the city and maybe big, you know, um, development programs or things like that. And I'm like, well, what about the kids that are here? So that's really what uh, inspired me. And then, you know, I have my teammates that were there. So, you know, Karen Lyon, who's one of, Karen, yeah, Glover actually now. <laughs> She's been married for a long time. Um, I just had kind of the resources because my teammates, many of them were still in Detroit. And so I knew that we could recreate what we did there. And it just took a little work, but it was really exciting. Also, I did it at the Olympic year. So I knew that Simone Biles was about to blow everybody away. So I'm like, let me get some gymnastics ready for all these young girls who are gonna be inspired for, by her. And Wendy, back in the day, you competed in multiple world championships. You noted that you didn't see many people of color when you were competing, but now we do have Simone Biles and Gabby Douglas who have made waves in recent Olympics. How does the sport continue to grow from a gender diversity perspective? Well, you know, it's interesting. So we've had these great champions and, you know, Gabby Douglas really broke the barrier of being the Olympic champion, the first black, which was, you know, just amazing, but also her longevity because she then made the 2016 team. She was like the second in the world in 2015 and then 2016, uh, Simone won the gold. So it's, it's a little bit misleading though, if you think the whole sport has grown a lot. There's no doubt there are many more blacks doing gymnastics, but the, the reality of it is, is that gymnastics is a very expensive sport and it tends to be located in the suburbs. So, you know, it's just not as accessible to most minorities as I think it should be. It's a foundational sport, but um, so, on the grassroots level, there's still a ways to go, and that's really just letting people be able to experience gymnastics and that without having such a cost and a dedication to, you know, getting your kid to gymnastics. So, yeah, on, on the top end, it's been pretty amazing. Um, and there are, of course, you know, Blacks and people of color that have money and can afford to do that gymnastics, which is wonderful, but it's still an uphill battle into making it accessible to all young people. Thank you so much for your insight today, Wendy. We really appreciate having you on, delving into your story and how the sport of gymnastics can continue to grow. I'm Jason Ross, Jr. of State Champs.
I'm Ryan Slocum. We head to northern lower Michigan for the 2021 Skiing State Finals. We begin in Division I at Nubs Knob with the girls. Pearl Hale taking on the giant slalom. Traverse City Central came out on top, winning the championship for the first time since 2013. Then over to the boys on the slalom. Traverse City West, Caleb Lewandowski placing seventh in this event. Shortly behind was his teammate, Andy Hill. Andy finished second place in the slalom as the Titan boys took home the state title for the first time in school history. Moving on to Division II at Boyne Highlands. For the fellas, Jack Lintel from Notre Dame Prep took first place in the giant slalom and second in the slalom, helping the Irish finish third. Anders McCarthy from Petoskey also had a great day, finishing in the top five for both events as his Northmen took home their 10th state championship in 11 years. On the girls' side, Cadillac's Georgette Sake came in seventh in the slalom as Cadillac finished tied with Petoskey for third and fourth. For Petoskey, Marley Spence would finish second in the giant slalom and in 10th in the slalom. And for the third year in a row, the Irish from Pontiac Notre Dame Prep claimed the Division II state hardware. Sidney Schulte had the best time in the slalom. We go to the Detroit Public School League for a first place showdown in the East Division as Martin Luther King went on the road to take on the Douglas Hurricanes. The Crusaders are number nine in our state champs top 25 state rankings and they would start the game on a 12-0 run. Chancey Willis Jr. finds Jalil Ward. He kisses it off the window. Ward had 12 points on the afternoon. Douglas is 18th in our rankings and is led by the Mr. Basketball candidate Pierre Brooks in the second. Brooks goes behind the back, step back for the long deuce, but the Hurricanes found themselves down 31-19 at the half. The Crusaders kept it rolling in the second half. They swing it around until they find Davin Walker. The senior gets three points the old-fashioned way. Later in the quarter, King playing relentless D. Ward walks the long ball attempt. Lamont Parks then fires it ahead to Willis. That's what I'm talking about, Willis. He makes the easy two, but Douglas wasn't backing down. It's Brooks working his way into the paint. The future Michigan State Spartan gets it to go and one. Then with just a second to play in the third, King misses the free throw attempt. Brooks launches it from 85 feet at the buzzer. Brooks was here. The number one Kane finished with a game high 37 points. Douglas still down though, 59-42 going into the fourth. And the Crusaders didn't take their foot off the gas. Willis Jr. gets the feed for another easy bucket. He scored a team high 26 as King goes on to win by a final of 69-51 and sits alone atop the PSL East Division standings. in Bay City for a battle of unbeatens, Frankenmuth visiting John Glenn. The Bobcats were rolling in the second quarter. Maddie Russell finds Kara McCrum in the paint. She puts it off the window and in. John Glenn was up eight at that point and led it 21-16 at the half. They go right back to work in the third. Cameron McKenzie on the wing for three. The junior puts the Cats up nine. But then Muth comes to life. Zoe for sales in transition. Off the high glass for the bucket and the foul. That caps a 7-0 run to cut the lead to two. John Glenn comes right back at him. Final second to the third. Abby Tarrant and one. This senior had 17 points and 20 boards. The Cats led it 33-27 after three. 
but the Eagles take over early in the fourth. Elania Solier triples from the corner. That puts Muth up two. They go up by four, but back come the Cats. Final minute, the senior Harley McCrum from downtown. John Glenn on top, 46-43. The Cats had a chance to ice it, but the freebie is no good. So here comes Muth with 15 seconds to play. Mia McLaughlin, clutch. The freshman triples to send the game to overtime, tied at 46. They play into a second OT where Persales picks off the pass and finds the freshman who seals the deal. McLaughlin scored 14 with 12 boards as Frankenmuth improves to 6-0, hanging on to hand Bay City John Glenn its first loss in double overtime, 53-50. All season long, we've been preaching defense wins us games, and we had a lapse that first half especially. And so going in the locker room, that's what we focused on was defense, 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 like the basic defense wins you championships, and that's what helped us at the end. And the girls, I mean, they just competed. You know, a freshman comes up and hits a three there to end the, end the regulation. I mean, she's not afraid of the spotlight, so it's certainly good to win on the road and stay atop the TBC East, but um, I give credit to, to our team for persevering and coming through. We go to competitive cheer and the second here on League Jamboree held at Flat Rock High School on Wednesday night. Let's get started with the Riverview Pirates in round one action. Keep the ones. What are we for? Be better. We want this sport. Make it clear. We came to play. They would end the night in sixth place. Next, the Chiefs of New Boston Huron. Solid performance here as the Chiefs would earn a fifth overall team finish. On to round three with the Jets of Carlton Airport. Their routine would land the Jets in fourth place. We now take a look at Monroe Jefferson. The Bears tied for the best score in round one. And they would go on to place third overall. Moving on to the Red Devils of Gros Eel. Good routine here in round three action. Gros Eel would finish as the runner up because this day would belong to the host school, the Rams of Flat Rock. Showing here in round two as they would go on to take the second Huron League Jamboree. I could not be more proud of the team that I am with you guys. No one deserves this more than you. Remember how last season ended? Don't be afraid to be awesome, all right? I'm Mike Erlitis. Lake Orion, one of the many sites this year due to COVID restrictions for the boys' Oakland County Swim Championships. We take you to the 200-yard IM. Detroit Catholic Central's Matthew Kozma taking first, 
followed by his teammate Christian Dunaitis. Those times would earn them first and second, not just here, but in the overall county standings. Up next, the finish of the day in the 50 free. Check out this photo finish. Both Lake Orion's Dane Herrick and Country Day's Jacob Ryan would tie, sharing top honors in the county. We head to the 100-yard breaststroke. Dunitis from CC takes gold, also placing again DCD's Jacob Ryan, whose second place finish here earned him a bronze overall. On to the main event, the 400 free relay. Shamrocks would begin to pull away. The anchor, Dallas Fisher, bringing it home as Detroit Catholic Central takes top honors in the event. After the dust settled from all the locations, the Shamrocks of CC would fall just short of Birmingham Seahome in the final team standings, placing second overall in Oakland County. Hi, I'm Laura Ramos with DMC Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine. And today on Game Changers, we're gonna talk about training your ankles to help prevent you from having an ankle sprain and also improve your ability to jump, run, and change direction. Let's test and train your ankles. The first test and exercise start at the wall. Line up your feet, front toe against the wall, back toe against your back foot. Make sure your toes are in alignment, you're not turned in or out. Now, in this position, keeping your knees straight, lift up the back toes as high as you can. Make sure both your little toe and big toe come off the ground. You should be able to clear space underneath. If you can do it, then that's gonna become your exercise. So you're gonna repeat that 10 times. Once you can do that 10 times, you're gonna increase it to three sets of 10. And then do the exact same exercise on the opposite leg and make sure that you have equal strength and mobility. The second exercise is also performed at the wall. Start in the exact same position. And now the front leg lifted up so you're just standing with a knee straight on the back leg. Rise up onto your toes as high as you can, lifting this heel. Your goal is to get it off the ground two to three inches. Make sure as you do so, you don't roll on the outside of your foot. Stay equal from big toe to little toe, and then lower back down. If you can do that, start out with a set of 10 reps. Go up as high as you can, hold and come down. And then progress to three sets of 10. Again, make sure your right and left legs are equal. The third test and exercise are done in sitting. Begin in this position with your knee bent about 90 degrees. Your foot's flat on the floor. Try to keep your heel down and turn your foot outward and then inward. As you do so, here's the emphasis. Make sure that your knee and hip don't move, that the motion is only coming out of your ankle. You should be able to do this with excellent motion inside and outside. Start with a set of 10 reps and then increase to three sets of 10. Most people, including elite athletes, have deficits of strength and flexibility at the ankles. So to improve performance and help prevent an injury, make sure you're training your ankles every day. If you're looking to improve your sports performance, visit the experts at DMC Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine. Do you have a sports injury, or are you just looking to take your game to the next level? Then go where the pros go. DMC Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine. For immediate care, call 313-910-9328 or visit dmc.org slash game changer. Welcome inside the State Champs Studios on the campus of Lawrence Technological University. Welcome to State Champs Hockey Time. I'm Jonathan Kitt, along with Sean Belegian. What's well, Sean, how's it going today? Uh, it's great. Another great week of hockey. As always, State Champs Hockey Time is presented by the Alta Equipment Company. So, John, why don't we go to those highlights? I'm Lauren Plant, and we go to the Catholic League Bishop Division Hockey Playoffs. 
U of D Jesuit, our second overall team in the state, on the road to take on the Pioneers from Riverview, Gabriel Richard. Pioneers have advanced as far as the Division III Final Four the last three seasons. We start first period. Riverview Gabriel Richard on the power play. Nick DeSanto with the backhand feed to Brendan Payton. It's like a magical force field kept that puck out of the net. We were scoreless after the first. U of D led by our Warrior Hockey Player of the Year candidate Max Marquette. Second period action. His shot swallowed up by the freshman netminder Ryan Rainey. The Pioneers with a golden chance late in the second. Brody Kirkpatrick sails the shot and it remained a scoreless affair. Pick it up with just over two minutes to go in the third. Cubs with the man advantage. Just a sea of bodies in front of the cage. The rubber can't get through. Richard able to clear the puck to overtime we go. For the Catholic League playoffs, they go four on four in OT. Jesuit with the good chance three minutes in. The senior Xavier Valer with a nice move, but Rainey with the denial. But moments later, Marquette shows you why. He's in player of the year contention, wins the faceoff, slips by another, and boom, ball game. UD Jesuit advances in the Catholic League playoffs, one nothing, your final score. Feels amazing, especially in a big game like this, Catholic League playoffs, feels great, tight game. His battle, down the wire, felt amazing to score that one. and at a Friday night rivalry game in the KLAA, the Brighton Bulldogs in the all-black uniforms visiting the Heartland Eagles wearing the all-whites for this one. Heartland tilting the ice in their favor in the first, but Brighton goalie Chris Wozniak gets some help from his best friend, Andrew Larson, with a shot off the post. At the other end, it's Del Waller with the floor check, takes it away, gets the shot off, but it's stopped by Ryan Piros. They were scoreless after the first. Early in the second, it's Andrew Larson with another great chance for Hartland right at the side of the net, but Wozniak somehow keeps it out. The Eagles had three power plays in the second period, but still could not score. The game remaining scoreless into the third. Here comes Waller with another chance for the Bulldogs, makes the move, but Shane Paxton comes flying back to knock it away. Adam Patilla then comes flying up the ice for the Eagles, but again, he's denied by Wozniak. Hartland out shooting Brighton 40-16, but in the only score that matters, it remained 0-0, so they play an eight-minute overtime. In OT, it's the Eagles with more great chances. Wozniak with another save, then it's one of his defensemen, Jonathan Sexsmith blocking the shot, the Dogs D blocking shots all night. Nick Baker has one final shot to break the deadlock, but Piros makes the glove save, and that was it. The goalies are the stars as this one ends in a scoreless tie. Uh, you know, I think it's uh, really good, you know, coming in from a tough loss from CC, and uh, especially on Wednesday. And coming in today, the boys really turned it around. We're coming together, and uh, I like what I'm seeing. I thought our team played good. It's just we ran into a hot goalie, and Waz played good. But I thought it was a good competitive game uh, throughout, and we'll get him next time. All right, it's time now for our Warrior Hockey Player of the Year update. Look at what Warrior dropped off to us here at, on the studio here. Outstanding. Thank you, Warrior. I mean, this is awesome. Uh, great gear. Look at those gloves. Aren't yeah. those beauties? Every, everything's so amazing now, John. You know, that everything's so much lighter. I mean, just hold the sticks from, you know, back in the day and everything. And uh, Warrior on the, the leading edge. So we appreciate you very much, Warrior. And what do you think about the QRE 10 stick there? Isn't that beautiful? It's, it, they, they're like feathers, man. Yeah, it, like before, when, when I was a kid, you were holding it like a tree, right? They're, they're like feathers, just, just beauty. So thank you, Warrior. All right, so over the weekend, we released our top 10 for the Warrior Hockey Player of the Year update. 
Today, we're going to be talking about two of those candidates. First off, let's talk about Lucas Kroll from Detroit Country Day. Well, I think first and foremost, to me, I mean, uh, Frank deserves such a tremendous amount of credit for what he's done at Detroit Country Day. Of course, of course, I'm touch- talking about uh, Coach Novak. Um, and one of the things that he's done is you, you watch players get better on his watch. And, and Kroll is certainly uh, one of those. You know, I, I think one of the things that jumps out to you is what an opposing coach told me about him. He is a threat anywhere on the ice. Now, that's a special kind of talent. Make no mistake about that. And to go back to the beginning, he's getting better as well. So um, when you ask around, and, you know, we explain the criteria all the time, John, to people, when when you ask coaches, you know, okay, who absolutely has to be on this list, he was unanimous. I'm not going to tell you all the unanimous guys, but he was unanimous, and that really that really speaks to me. Next up, we're going to be talking about Billy Shields from the Detroit Catholic Central. Well, the first thing that jumps out to you, and I think you and I had an up-close and personal look at this, the kid can move. I mean, he, he really can move. I always like to defer to coaches. I, I think that's the important thing when, when you do something like this. Um, you know, ask the guys that get a chance to see them more often than not. And I love what Coach Kalanicki said about him because you you then watch it when you when you watch him play and you watch the Shamrocks play. His compete level. This is a guy that doesn't give up. It, the tenaciousness that he goes after it is is awesome. So you know, with so many guys at, at Catholic Central in recent years, because of the schedule that they play. What they do might not show up on the score sheet. They might not have bombastic numbers, but what you're seeing is you're seeing complete players. And based on you know who they're playing against, those numbers might not be as high as guys otherwhere. But I'll tell you what, when you're talking about complete players, you better include this kid's name on the list. Remember, you can cast your vote at statechampsnetwork.com. The leading vote getter will never be removed from the list. Support your guy. And, you know, I it, honestly, John, I, I've had a couple of different coaches tell me, I like this guy or that guy. You guys can vote too, okay? So make sure you get out there and vote. All right, so that was our Warrior Hockey Player of the Year update. Hey everybody, Harrison BB joining you from Northern Michigan for a great one on the ice as top 10 ranked programs meet up in high school hockey. Traverse City West and the Bay Reps out of a scrum. Jack Brzezinski gets it over to Titan teammate Tyler Esman who delivers top shelf. That's one nothing Titans midway through the first period. Midway into the second, now about the same time in that second period. West down a man on the Bay Rep power play, but that didn't stop Michael Skirmerhorn from knocking in another attempt. Off the miss from Esman, 2 nothing Titans at center rice. A few minutes later, reps on another power play. Tyson Griffer deflects a great shot from a teammate on net. Makes it 2-1 to one as the reps are in business. West would retake the lead, though, a few minutes after that. Grant Lefebvre shot deflected in by Murphy Kehoe. Beautiful spot to knock the puck in the corner. Just over two minutes left in the third. Reps get a late goal from Chris Gay in front of the net. But this was TC West's night as they win it over the rival reps 3-2 to two in a meeting of top 10 programs in Division I. East Grand Rapids, twice in the last four or five days here, I can guarantee you they are having nightmares about that game fair. Okay? I can guarantee you they've been thinking about coming back and beating us today. How do we stop that? We outwork them. We now go to the west side of the state for an OK conference matchup with Grand Rapids Forest Hills Central taking on East Grand Rapids for the second time in four days. The Rangers won the first game 4-1, to one, so EGR had a little payback in mind. First period action, Riley Siginja with the feed to Ted Campbell who pokes it in, giving the Pioneers a 1-0 lead. Still in the first, EGR with the man advantage, and they would add another. Connor Gendrich throws it at the net. Billy Boosie gets a stick on it for the goal. That puts EGR up a deuce after the first. More from the Pioneers in the second. Both teams skating four on four. Siginja with the feed to Campbell, and the senior buries his second of the night. That makes it a three nothing game. Forest Hills Central looking for any momentum in the third. Skating six on three thanks to two penalties and a pulled goalie. Samuel Mylock there to bang home the loose puck. 
That cuts the lead to two with under three minutes to go. Then moments later, with the Rangers skating six on four, Andrew West gets the puck for the Pioneers, fires it from three quarters of the ice to the open net, and that would do it. EGR gets its revenge on Forest Hill Central by the same exact final score of four to one. Feels good for all the returning guys in the room. It took us three times to beat them. Finally feels good to get after them and hopefully we'll see them again in playoffs. We're just happy to get the win. We got a big weekend coming up. Take it one at a time and it's nice to get a little revenge. We feel like we didn't play well uh, on Saturday, so it was good to come out and be on the other end. All right, it's time now for our Coaches Corner, brought to you by our friends at the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. I'm joined by today by the head coach at Byron Center High School, Taylor Keyworth. Thanks for being on the show, and just talk about your guys' season so far this year. Yeah, we're off to uh, a pretty successful start. Um, it's always good to get some wins early in the year, and um, I still think we got a lot of room for improvement, and, and you know, hopefully we're building towards the end of February, end of March here, where we can hopefully really hit our stride and, and make a push for the, uh, the postseason. How's it feel to, for you guys just to be back on the ice after this long, long break? Yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. Like, for our program to, you know, be on our way to our first Final Four ever last year, um, and then for have that be cut short and then get rolling again. And, and I think we kind of knew that we were going to have a strong team only graduating two guys last year. And then for that to get you know, paused again, you know, it was very, very frustrating for our for our program and for our kids and our players and families um, and our staff, I guess, too. So it's just awesome to have the kids back out there. You can tell they're loving it. They they know what's at stake and they're excited to show up to the rink every single day. And, you know, playing three, four games a week is, is a lot, but they're happy to be out there and, and pumped to be competing again together. You guys obviously play on the west side of the state. You guys play in the Ottawa Kent Conference. Just talk about the level of competition you guys play each and every night. Yeah, it's strong, I think. I think we have, you know, the three conferences, the three OK conferences, and, you know, all the teams are, are strong, and, and you never really get a night off. I know it's like that on the east side with a lot of conferences, too, the, you know, where the Heartlands and the Trentons and the Brother Rices of the world play. And, you know, we're just trying to continue to build on the west side and, and you know, it's it's very consistent night in and night out. There's never a game that anyone's out of, and there's never a game that you show up to and say, ah, oh, this is a, a walk in the park. It's great for the kids. It's great for the competition on the west side, and it really rises everyone's gameplay, whether we're playing Grand Rapids Catholic Central, Rockford, Granville, Mona Shores. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter because everyone usually shows up with, you know, a great team, a great game plan, and, and we've had some awesome games so far this year. Hey, let's be ready to go right off the hop, yeah? Ready to go right off the hop. A couple weeks ago, Zach Herrig over at Fox 17 mic'd you during a game. Just talk about that experience, like with being mic'd up for a, for a high school game. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Honestly, you don't really think about it. You know, he's there and he, he puts gives you the mic and you hook it up. And once the puck drops, you just, you know, we try to operate the same way we always do and make sure that we're prepared as a staff and that we're encouraging our guys. And we're there to support them and insulate them as much as we can and, and get them going. And, give them as many tools and resources as we can to, to get the best product on the ice. And, you know, being mic'd up, it's fun. You get to kind of look back and I watched the video one time and, you know, man, I sound like an idiot here. And sometimes I probably sound better than I should. So thanks to Zach for maybe making me look a little better than I probably was. I always ask each coach this, how much do you enjoy going on the ice each and every week to coach these boys? Yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. And that's the probably my favorite part of this whole program and, and everything we're doing here on the west side and in Byron Center is we got just great kids, great people. Um, you know, our team, this is our, our fifth year as a program, right? All the first four years, every single year, our, our team's been academic all state and these kids bust their butts in the classroom and then they get to come and work and, and really create a, an awesome environment together. And we've had such good people and such good kids that have you know, with a program in such infancy, you know, it's it's been so great to see these people really be all in and, and get us off to the start that we've been able to get off to. And and it's been, you know, being on the ice with the kids every single day is just, it's the, you know, it's the blessing at the end of the day that makes us come back as a staff and, and everyone else come every single day with our, you know, game plan and, and get to enjoy it and spend time with these kids and hopefully positively impact them and, and also get to play some hockey games. 
All right, Taylor. So best of luck to you guys the rest of the season. And that was our Coach's Corner brought to you by our friends at the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. Hey, what's up? It's time for the Alta Equipment Company main event. Guys, let's go out today. Let's win races. Let's win spaces, fellas. Let's go, boys. Let's play fast. Let's have fun, boys. Let's play loose. Let's go win the day. You guys got it? Let's go! Let's go, boys. Let's go. We go to more action from the Catholic League playoffs. Two teams in our top 25 squaring off. Number eight, Cranbrook at home to take on 15th ranked Warren De La Salle. Cranbrook coming off wins over Orchard Lake St. Mary's, Catholic Central, and Trenton last week. The Crane train continuing to rumble. First period, check out Jacob Butterbin slicing and dicing, serves it up to Alex Serratano, who buries it. De La Salle answered 30 seconds later. The junior, Seton Heilman, gets the turnover, finds the twine. It was one-to-one -one after the opening period of play. We jump ahead to the third, still knotted at ones. Cranbrook trying to capitalize on the power play. The junior defenseman, Michael Brown, top cheddar. That gives the Cranes a lead. But back come the pilots in the offensive zone and the senior, Tegan Fuqua, on the doorstep to finish. We were tied again at two. Would this game go into overtime? Cranbrook had different plans. Eight seconds to go. Jack Weinman gets it to Isaac Chelly and the senior with a nifty move then lights the lamp. Game winner. Cranbrook is moving on in the Catholic League playoffs, beating De La Salle 3-2. The main event is presented by the Ulta Equipment Company, Michigan's number one construction equipment provider with over 40 brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time. All right, so that's it for another edition of State Champs Hockey Time. Sean, man, it's just so great to be back. Oh, it's tremendous. I mean, you know what, it, John, it, we could sit here for the next hour and a half talking about it, but, you know, I, I love it. The, the, the kids right now, some of the schedules that they are playing are absolutely brutal. But you know what, you're still seeing the smiles on faces, and it allows guys like you and I to go out to games every night if we so choose, and that's beautiful. Remember, you can watch our show on our website, statechampsnetwork.com, and all of our State Champs social media channels. And remember, you can vote in the Warrior Hockey Player of the Year contest. I'm John and the Kid, along with Sean Belegian, and that's it for another edition of State Champs Hockey Time. So, Sean, what do we say? We'll see you at the rink. The Winter Tournament Series is just around the corner. This year, with everything getting pushed back, spring sports have also been delayed by one week. Practices for spring sports can now start on March the 22nd, with competitions being able to start later that week on March the 26th. It's a decision that 75% of our schools were in favor of through an athletic director survey. Out of season training for spring sports, such as four player workouts or open gyms, those can continue this year right up until the first day of spring practice through March the 21st. The postseason dates for our spring sports, baseball, upper and lower peninsula boys golf, UP girls golf, boys and girls lacrosse, girls soccer, softball, UP boys tennis, lower peninsula girls tennis, and track and field in both peninsulas all remain the same. And all of our spring finals will conclude by June the 19th. Spring sports, of course, had their entire seasons wiped out last year due to COVID. While practice is gonna be one week later than scheduled and competition will be two days later than what was originally scheduled, we're still confident our spring teams, coaches, and athletes will have a great experience this year. Our goal has been three seasons that all reached the finish line and we're well on the way to meeting each of those goals. To stay up to date on all things MHSAA, visit us at our website, mhsaa.com. Another terrific show, and we thank everyone here at State Champ Sports Network for bringing it to life. And as always, it's an awesome honor and a privilege to have you, the high school sports community, joining us each and every week. Please like our State Champs Michigan Facebook page, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, download the free State Champs Network app, and subscribe to our State Champs TV YouTube page. And please share it. It's the best way to show your support for state champs.
Two is an anomaly, three is a pattern, and that can't happen. The Rose Rochambeau winning streak ends now. Rochambeau. State Champs Michigan's High School Sports Show is presented by Lawrence Technological University. LTU offers over two dozen varsity sports for men and women, along with several dozen world-class undergraduate programs. Athletic and academic scholarships are available in all sports. Visit ltuathletics.com and recruit yourself. Also brought to you by the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. The Michigan Army National Guard, a proud partner of the MHSAA. Detroit Medical Center Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine. Do you have a sports injury or are you just looking to take your game to the next level? Go where the pros go. Visit dmc.org slash game changers. The Detroit Athletic Club Foundation, Alta Equipment Company, Michigan's number one construction equipment provider with over 40 brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time. Warrior Hockey and the new Covert QRE 10 stick. Elite puck feel and quick release for players of all ages. The Warrior Covert QRE 10 stick. There's no feeling like it.